The second case where we use the law of cosines is side, side, side. This is where we know the measurements of all three sides, but no angles. If this happens, you want to make sure, number one, that a triangle exists. So basically, you add up the two shorter sides, and that needs to be larger than the third side. So I'll give you an example in example two. We're going to take the two shorter sides. So this is, is there a triangle? Shorter sides are four and five. That needs to be greater than the third side. In this case, nine is greater than seven, so a triangle does exist. You're good to go. Anytime you have side, 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 you should get in the habit of just checking that first. If there is no triangle, your answers are D and E, and you're done. You can move on with your life. Now, let's talk about if a triangle does exist. We're going to use the law of cosines to find the largest angle first. This is because there is no ambiguous case with the law of cosines. So that's why we use it to find the largest angle. Use the law of cosine to find the obtuse angle because then you can switch over to the law of sines to find all the other ones because you don't have to worry about any ambiguous case after that. Basically, general rule, never use law of sines to find an obtuse angle. So, use the law of cosines to find the obtuse one, then you can use law of sines to find the rest of them. So, uh, and that's what it says right here, then you can switch to the law of sines to finish solving the triangle. Let's look at example two. We have a triangle with A equals 4, B equals 7, and C equals 5. So A equals 4, let's do C equals 5, B equals 7. So go across, that would make that alpha. Across, that is beta. Across, this is gamma. First we notice, hey, this is side, side, side. So I've got to use the law of cosines because I don't have a complete pair. Can't use law of sines. Next, if we're using law of cosines, we should solve for the largest angle first to make sure there's no ambiguous case. We always use law of cosines to find that bigger one. So we're finding the largest angle. We know that beta will be the largest angle because it's across from the largest side. Now, remember that in our three versions of the law of cosines, there's only one angle, and it's at the end of the law of cosines, because then we have our cosine part. I think that one was... What color was the cosine part? It was yellow, right? Okay, there we go. And if I have beta here at the end of the law of cosines, I know the law of cosines needs to start with a b squared. That was part of the pattern, that the first and the last ones are the pairs. They go together. Now, if I start with b squared, that means a squared and c squared comes next, then my minus 2, then a and c. So you see how you don't really need to memorize the three versions? Based on what you're solving for, you can put the law of cosines together. So let's plug in all the pieces that I know. b is 7, a is 4, c is 5. Repeat those numbers, cosine of beta. Now the first thing I would like you to notice is that my variable that I'm solving for is in a very different place than it was in the last video. In the last video, the thing we were solving for was right here. So all we had to do was square root and we were done. However, this time what I'm solving for is at the end. That means this is going to be a lot more complicated to solve for. Here's how I would always simplify this. In pieces. And specifically, 
these three pieces. So 7 squared is 49. 4 squared plus 5 squared is 41. Negative 2 times 4 times 5 is a negative 40. And then we have cosine of beta. So this is already starting to look a lot simpler to solve. Now, here comes the most important part of this entire video. Every student at some point in the law of cosines is tempted to subtract these two things. Do 41 minus 40 and then write it as 1 cosine beta. That is wrong. Let me show you why. If I gave you instead an example like this, you would never simplify to that. You don't do 2 minus 5 and get negative 3x. You don't do it. That is wrong. Don't do that. Instead, we minus the 2 over first and then divide by the negative 5. Same thing here. You cannot combine those, no matter how tempting it is. Don't do it. We need to subtract the 41 first, and then divide by the negative 40. So then I get cosine of beta equals negative 8 fortieths, and then I do my arc cosine to get rid of cosine to figure out that beta is going to be 101.537 degrees. And just like we thought, it is obtuse. That's why we always solve for the largest angle with the law of cosines because that's the obtuse one. That means the other two will be acute and I can use law of sines to solve for those. So at this point, we have a complete pair. You can switch over to the law of sines now. Now remember, you don't have to. You can continue solving with the law of cosines. It's just a kind of a long process to solve an, for an angle with the law of cosines. Solving for an angle with law of sines is a lot faster. So I switch over, and at this point, I can solve for alpha or gamma. It really doesn't matter. So let's go ahead and solve for alpha together. So we get my complete set equals sine of alpha over 4. And you should know how to solve this at this point. So pause the video work through solving for alpha on your own, then use your 180 rule to solve for gamma. Ready, go. Let's check your work. So, I solved for alpha and I got that using law of sines. Now that I have two angles, I can use my 180 rule to solve for gamma, and now the entire triangle is solved for. So, that is an example of the side-side-side case. Those are the only two cases we use with law of cosines, side angle side and side side side. And now you know how to use those. So that is it for the law of cosines. In the next video, we'll do a story problem and an area problem that use the law of cosines.